Yo, yo, what up, everyone? My name is Michael Finn. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a rapper, I'm an actor, I'm a wrestler, and overall, just a great human being and a psychopath. So, what's good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I can, see. out of out of all the things you said, I can only confirm the last one that you're a psychopath. I don't know about all the other ones, but we'll, we'll figure out. We'll figure allegedly, out. allegedly. Yeah. But yeah, man, it has been a long time. The last time we talked was yeah two years ago when we talked pre open hype cipher days. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll get I'll get straight into it with the interview, man. With the first question. Um, and if I'm being honest, I know nothing about the hip hop scene in Denmark, right? So can you give, uh, and for the people that don't know, that's where Michael Finn is based in. So for the people that are watching, can you give a brief rundown of what the underground scene is like in Denmark for hip hop artists? Right, definitely. I'd say like, as far as like the underground hip hop scene in Denmark, it's, I mean, first of all, Denmark isn't a huge country. It's a nation of I want to say five and a half million people so mm -hmm. it's it's a, a very small country uh with Copenhagen obviously being the capital um but like as far as like the hip-hop scene the underground scene is very very small because just because like I mean if if you're an underground rapper it's not like in the states where you can like make a comfortable living off of it just because the scene is so small i want to say like in denmark overall you still there's still like the mentality i feel of you need to like kind of get signed to make big money uh and even when you do get signed to make big money as an mc at least i, I feel like you still have to make big money doing like um festivals because denmark it's not a big enough country to tour all year round. Like, whereas, uh, luckily for me, I rap, I rap in English, but like, I don't do it for a full-time living yet. I'm an, I'm an actor as a full-time, that's my full-time job at the moment. But like, it, when you rap in Danish, when you do like a tour over here, it's probably like five, five dates during the fall. For example, like it's not like in the UK or the US or even Australia where you can like do like a, a loop all year round because the, the nation is so small, which also makes the underground scene like extremely small. Um, so that's probably the best way to put it. Yeah, very yeah niche okay. as I far guess as that, underground. That... I guess that makes sense. Um, and I guess, well, it's funny though. So like I, I grew up in New Zealand and New Zealand only has a population of about 4 million. Um, and New Zealand has like a really, really bustling underground hip hop scene. Like it is really, really intense, even though there's only 4 million people. But I think that's because American culture has such a large influence on New Zealand culture or like or at least the people that live in New Zealand. So um like a lot of kiwi rappers too and i think i'm guilty of this too we sound american when we rap because that's all we listen to right so like yeah it is, it's, yeah yeah but like because because i imagine though but that's because i would say you know in hip-hop especially you know like in the younger generations hip-hop is definitely the number one genre that people listen to but i imagine in denmark it's probably like techno or house or some shit right well, actually, I'd say like right now, uh, right now, meaning like now and 10 years prior, maybe even a bit before, uh, I'd say hip hop over here has been like the number one genre as well. I think for the most oh, part, hip hop, especially like the trap, is mm -hmm. kind of like the number one genre. Um, of course, like it's Europe, so like especially in Scandinavia, more, maybe more so in Sweden, like EDM. Mm -hmm is like big in the charts as well. Um, but but I, I wanna say like hip hop, like you hear it everywhere. It's like in every country you go to, like there's some, there's some trap pop song, number one in the charts, only it's in their own language. And uh, you know, over here in Denmark, obviously, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say obviously, because maybe for those of you who don't know, like Danish is like the main language. Scandinavians do speak fluent English anyway but like when it comes to hip-hop for some i would say i shouldn't say for some reason but like when you rap in danish like um it's like even though they speak english fluently over here 
I rap in English, but like I've had a hard time like trying when I did try to get signed, I, I couldn't really get signed over here because I was told by industry folks over here that and it, it's true what they said, I found out, but like Danes, they really like they relate better to like rappers who rap in Danish. Like in pop music is kind of different, but I feel like in hip hop, it's more like in pop music, you can like make like a thousand love songs and they don't really mean much because it's so oversaturated. But like w when you rap, it has it's to be like personal. in their mother language. Yeah, because it's more relatable, even though they do speak English. But like, I'm sorry, like to answer your question, like hip hop, I'd say it's like the number one genre over here as well. Over here, it's a bit more poppy than it is like in the United States in the sense it's, it is a bit more, I wouldn't say there's EDM like influences, but like it's a lot, it's not as trappy as it is or aggressive as it is like in, in other countries. Yeah. Um, okay. So well, yeah. I, shit, I guess that goes to show how little I know about the hip hop scene in Denmark. Cause I would have never guessed that. There's not much, the in your genre. defense, there's not much to know though. There's not much to know. Like it, mm. it, it, it's like people who don't live here wouldn't know that anyway. Yeah, so yeah. because it's it's not like people in other countries they I mean I know some people who listen like to Japanese and Korean hip hop but you know Denmark isn't like isn't like as prevalent of a country as those two like when people think of Scandinavia for the most part they think of of Sweden um so like Denmark is like the I wouldn't say the bastard child, but like with like the little brother in Scandinavia, in yeah. Scandinavia. So there's not really much to 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 know, like okay. apart from Lego, probably. So like you would say most, not most, but you would say there are more like hip hop clubs in Denmark than any other genre. Let's say like hip hop and R and B clubs than any other genre of club. Actually, no. Like the, even though like hip hop hip hop pop like is in like um the top of the charts right now over here there's actually never really been a hip uh, there's probably been like one or two hip hop clubs in Copenhagen that I may not I may not be too aware of but like for the most part it's not like it's not like you go to like the UK or the US or or like any of those places like they, they usually is like a club for hip hop and there's a club for EDM and there's a club where they play all kinds of shit. Over here, like it's mainly just pop, you know, mm -hmm. clubs, like where they play what's hot on the radio and what was hot on the radio five years ago. Uh, there's not really- That sounds awful. There's not, <laughs> I mean, I, I, everyone's like entitled to their own opinions, but I agree, <laughs> I agree, but like, there's not much there's not much variety over here as far as nightclubs go it's not to like bash the clubs or anything but like i mean here and there you'd, you'd hear some afro beat kind of songs in clubs but that's only because afro beat is kind of popping right now you know yeah. so i mean it's i guess but, in melbourne like in melbourne australia we're definitely spoil a lot when it comes to like clubs and music selection because i can't think of a genre of music that there isn't a club dedicated to it in the city right now. Like you can find a club, like a club night that's just Afro beats. You can find one that's just like hip hop. And then you can find like, even there'll be sub genres. You'll have like a club that's like drill. You get what I mean? And then like, there'll be like yeah. African funk or something like there's There's even sub genres for, for clubs and shit at this point uh, here in Melbourne. So we're definitely spoiled here, I guess, in that sense. Um, yeah. But, I mean, I mean we probably obviously... like Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We we obviously do still have clubs, like you said, where they just play like all the radio songs and all the pop stuff and stuff. But yeah, yeah. There's, there's basically something for everyone, I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll move on. I'll move on to the next question, man. I think I think you gave a great answer to that. I th I'm sure everyone watching this knows a hell of a lot more about Denmark underground <laughs> scene than they did before. Probably. The <laughs> um but yeah the, the start you mentioned you know you do so many things so how do you how do you balance like wrestling rapping acting and just having like a regular life and just like staying shape staying in shape and everything at the same time as well how do you manage to balance all of those things personally 
Yeah, so, so far, I'd say, um, I'm not sure if luckily is the right phrase, but like, I've been fortunate, kind of, because I've been fortunate in, in the sense that like, my schedule hasn't been that busy yet. I mean, it's getting busier now because my fan base is slowly growing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on tour. Like I, 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 I do theater. So at the moment, not right now, but like I'm normally on tour with that mm -hmm. uh, around like Denmark. But like I, I try to like kind of balance it as as good as I can. It, there, there are some times where you know dates get in the way of each other. Like often there's been times where there's like been a wrestling show and a gig on the same day. So I try to like kind of you know balance, balance like I'll be honest like the music is the is the number one priority, like it's the one I strive for the most as far as like what I want to make a living out of. But like I'd say right now, uh, especially since the acting gig, like the, in the last year I've had to like step away from wrestling, so that I could focus on that. And you know when I'm not doing that, I'm focusing on music. Mm -hmm. So. Um, you know, it's all about just, you know, trying, you know, time management. I haven't been the best at it, but like, as I get older, I try to like, kind of, you know, um, pick and choose my battles as far as like the schedule goes. And like, I'll always, for the most part, unless I've said yes to a booking prior to another, then I'll, for the most part, I'll always like pick the music stuff over it, like the wrestling and the acting stuff yeah. um if that makes sense so it's all yeah, about yeah, you know yeah. just juggling it the best way that you can because it, it there's not really an easy way to do it unfortunately but you know i i try my best but there is a day where i i probably have to choose one over the other not permanently but just like for a period of time so i can like kind of you know manage it the way the best way that i can to the chest like